We have new wiper malware that has been targeting Ukraine as part of the ongoing conflict. Now, when we talk about cyber attacks, there are a variety of different attacks that are profitable, and there are some that are simply acts of cyber warfare. And wipers are something you typically don't see legitimate criminal enterprises doing uh, because it means there's no ability to recover the data at all. So in a ransomware attack, a piece of malware will basically try to find as much access as it can or escalate, escalate its access to expand its blast radius. And then as soon as it has a lot of different devices it has access to, it will lock them and it will encrypt the data in a way that it has some sort of agreement with the command and control server so that the person at the other end who's waiting for the money has the key to unlock the data. If they don't do this, then eventually news will get around that, hey, you can't actually unlock this data and nobody will pay you. So it's not very profitable to actually destroy the data in this sort of attack. What we're seeing increasingly is uh, this data is just gone in these attacks against Ukraine. And this is part of a cyber warfare tactic to degrade the infrastructure and make it hard to go about daily life or conduct any sort of operations when these major targets are hit in ways that it is impossible to recover from and you waste their time by pretending to be ransomware. So what is notable about this is a lot of the malware uh, called Hermetic Wiper will still pretend to be ransomware. So it'll waste the target's time, money, and resources by making them think it's possible to recover the system when in fact it's actually just destroyed it. Now, sometimes these attacks will also be designed to just damage morale. So it'll more be about kind of making people feel like it's not even worth it to stand up their systems again because everything is just gone. There's no hope of recovery. Um, this is obviously very damaging to operations and morale. And these are the kinds of attacks that are gonna make it really difficult to go about daily life as uh, banks are suddenly not able to dispense cash and other daily services are shut down like transportation, trains, all that sort of stuff. So um, this is obviously an extremely destructive thing to do and it has been linked to a group known to be associated with the Russian main intelligence directorate, GRU. Um, of course, the Kremlin has denied the allegation, but uh, the fact that this has been timed in very, very close parallel with an actual invasion makes it seem like these sorts of attacks are all tied together into what the current well, I guess it's not really the future of warfare anymore. It's just the current state of warfare is right now. This is going to be a combined hyper, uh, hyper, I guess, sorry, hybrid attack uh, where infrastructure is targeted in order to make it difficult to go about any sort of business. And also attacks are coordinated ahead of time to make sure that when actual troops are going in, nothing works. So um, pretty scary to know how tied together these two, two domains are. Uh, really, it looks like it's not worth it to launch an invasion if you're not able to knock a bunch of systems offline first and make it really difficult for defenders to communicate or, or even have civilian populations go around uh, and do their daily business. Yeah, this is definitely scary because it's um, showing what hybrid warfare looks like now. Like critical infrastructure extends just beyond like um, typical tangible stuff into um, like the cyber realm. Like you can target stuff like banks, the Ministry of Defense, stuff like that. They're also being hit by lots of like DDoS attacks, um, phishing campaigns, other stuff like that. It's pretty scary. Yeah. So all this is, of course, making people in Ukraine extremely nervous because I mean, some days they can't access their money. Sometimes they can't access the news. Uh, and these denial of service attacks are also sometimes targeting infrastructure like internet. So if you suddenly can't get any information and you can't contact people, it's a very scary situation and disinformation can spread more quickly. So um, yeah, altogether very scary and a very sketchy state of affairs for infrastructure in Ukraine. During the first wave of attacks, we also saw lots and lots of time wasted in these attacks where Russian actors were able to get in uh, and get access to large amounts of critical data. And then once they had enough of a foothold in the system would wait for sometimes weeks or months, sometimes even years on end until it was an opportune moment to strike and just erase everything. And then try to make it seem as though the data was recoverable, but in the end, it, it just isn't recoverable at all. So this is of course designed to not only demoralize people and deny them their ability to access their data, but also to waste their time. Because ransomware attacks are so common nowadays that lots of people have actually decided to start paying for these ransoms. But when these are wiper attacks, there's absolutely no chance that you're ever gonna get your data back. 
So it's a pretty grim situation for people that get hit with ransomware now because they don't know, especially if they're in Ukraine, if this is legitimately ransomware that they can pay someone to get up and running again, or if it has just destroyed their system and there's no point in engaging with them at all. So there have actually been three waves of attacks against Ukrainian infrastructure. And this is kind of like the second wave that was going specifically after uh, banking services and using distributed denial of service attacks in order to do so. Now, what's interesting is a lot of these botnets are capable of doing a lot of damage when pointed at specific targets. And that's really a lot of what's going on here is there's massive amounts of uh, cyber infrastructure that has been compromised by different botnets that's being specifically targeted at banking uh, and making it very difficult for people to withdraw money or access any information about their funds online. And when you're worried about you know, an impending disaster and maybe you want to buy some supplies, it's a very scary situation when suddenly you can't access the banks, you can't go to the ATM, and also you can't access your money online. So a lot of this is, again, attempts to sow instability and make it difficult for people to just remain calm. So not being able to buy, for example, a ticket out of the country would be extremely inconvenient right now. And by ta uh, targeting some of the largest banks in the country, they've made it a very frightening situation for the civilians who are, are trying to get out.